The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Hello, I'm Javier Hernandez with the United States Courts. As the calendar turned to 2021, the third branch of government, like the rest of America, is still wrestling with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. There is new hope as vaccinations continue to accelerate nationwide. But until that time, the judiciary continues to focus on best practices for safety in all of its courthouses. As Ken Crawford reports, one of the tools being used is a simple smoke test. So again, even if he has a mask, it, it, it could be dangerous. So let's see how, how this goes here. Masking, social distancing, symptom checks, courtroom plexiglass dividers, hand sanitizer stations, and deep cleaning are all important when it comes to COVID safety. But what about the air? Where does it move? How fast? And here I have a tube that has two different chemicals. The chemicals are in glass vials. I'm not gonna go and break the glass vials. So you're gonna hear it pop. And then when both of these are broken and I now send air through this, I get smoke coming out on the other side. We have all learned the COVID-19 virus spreads through the air when infected people exhale. The largest droplets in those exhalations pose the greatest risk, particularly in smaller spaces with poor ventilation. Not all virus droplets are necessarily caught by a mask or fall harmlessly to the ground. Some smaller particles can travel farther in the air. That's why understanding indoor air movement is vitally important. See, there's a stronger flow here. But clearly, this exhalation is not going to hit the, per the person that's sitting over there, so he's safe. And also, this guy over here is safe. You just see where the smoke is going, and, and, and I mean, it's so obvious. Chief U.S. District Court judges are turning to experts like Dr. Reynold Lohner, a professor of fluid dynamics at George Mason University. He has worked with district courts in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore to help test assumptions on airflow and how to make courtrooms, public spaces, and offices as safe as possible. We got thrown into this not knowing what was more important, what was less important, and so forth. Did a lot of reading, frankly, on my own and got focused on ventilation as a major factor in keeping courthouses safe. There are a lot of factors that go into proper ventilation, from increasing outside air into HVAC systems to testing air supply and return. Courts are also using portable HEPA filters to circulate and filter air more efficiently. We care about the staff here. We care about the customers. We care about the judges, the lawyers, anyone that's entering that front door, we do care about and we want everyone to be safe. And that is how the chief judge feels also. Justice delayed is justice denied. A balance had to be struck. And that's what Dr. Lohner helped us with. He came in, I sized him up as a guy with a sort of a deep academic background, a lot of experience, and most important for me, common sense. It's a qualitative test, and, and uh, you know, you can, you can see if, if this is dangerous or not. Yeah. If, if, if you're exhaling and, and your exhalation goes to somebody else, that, that's very bad news. That's, you know, Avoid that situation, that, that's all there is. This is, I mean, it's not rocket science. I have had people who've lost husbands and a mother to COVID. So it's real. And I have to let my staff know that if they come in here and do their job, I will protect them. The work of the U.S. courts never really stopped, although many districts did delay in-person proceedings until it was safe to reopen courthouses. The federal judiciary wants Americans to know that public health is a top priority and courts are following all CDC guidelines. Reporting for the U.S. Courts, I'm Javier Hernandez in Washington.